we're going to make a pair of winding sticks. And um, I've used winding sticks all through my life. We use them to test pieces of wood, sections of a piece of wood, a beam or whatever, to make sure they're not twisted. And we use that to test the first face when we plane four square. We place one stick here and another stick here, and then we sight in to see if the, if the, the face is twisted or not. And that's why they're called winding sticks. This is a pair given to be me by a friend, Steve Wiseman, who's an architect in Canada. And I use these a lot. You can see these are rectangular in section and I like these, but let me just show you what I prefer and I would encourage you to have is a triangular uh, winding stick because you have more bottom weight than the top and they stand better when you place them. Whereas these are equal top and bottom, they still work. I just have to be a little bit more careful. So we're going to make this pair of winding sticks with some light colored wood inlay on some mahogany and um, then here some ebony on the back and now you could use walnut if you've got walnut and um, you can color your wood if you want to um, with a sharpie or something like that but I, I think I have some pieces of ebony that I'm going to make or use and I have some old piano keys and things like that that I often use for small projects like this. So let's get started and take a look at how we make winding sticks. I've got a piece of mahogany here. This is 16 inches long. It's one and a quarter tall and it's one inch wide here, uh, thick should I say. So let me show you where we're going with this. Did a quick sketch just to get you in the ballpark. So this is the ebony piece with the long inlay in it. This one here. And then this one has the, the white inlay tabs in there. <coughs> and, um, and so it's very simple. This is a nice project. It's great to make, make your own. And you're actually making a pair of lifetime tools that you can use for the rest of your life. So it's, it's really great to make it. So a couple of sticks of wood and we're on our way. First of all, what we're going to do is ignore these. I've changed the size on these. These are a little bit lightweight. Here is the actual size of the ones we're going to make. So you can see I took this from here, which is similar to this. By the time you taken the saw kerf out and everything, that will be the same size. So these are the ones we're going to make. My first task is to set this gauge to, would you believe, uh, 11 sixteenths, I think it is. So that's 11 sixteenths, which is 17 millimeters. It doesn't matter which edge you run your gauge from at this stage, we're gonna go this is the narrow face, this is the one inch face. So we're running the gauge along here like this. I'm gonna start here and then just run it. And you can go quite hard on this because you want a, a definitive line. Normally I might not say that. But there is one. Now watch the way I flip this now. Whoops. My gauge slipped because I knocked it. Set it tight. Watch the, watch the way I flip this. So I've run my gauge line on this side. Now I flip this this way, so I'm on the opposite face. And I run my gauge line again, like this. I'm making it quite positive so you can see it mostly. There's my gauge line and there's my gauge line. Now I'm going to put the line across here so here is my line here and the line is here so it technically I can't really go from the lot from the, the mark to the mark with a gate with a pencil line like this I put the line on purely as a visual but what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to place my saw on 
this side of the line here and then I'm going to go to this side here and put it on this side of the line. So it's actually going to be taking something off the face of this one and the face of this one. Very important. If you want these to be the same size, that's going to be important. So now I'm going to start mine with a tenon saw and then I'm going to switch to a hand saw. So here we go. This is where I go on one side of the line and then to this side of the line. Now that means, can you see, I've got, can you see right in here, I'm on that side. If I flip it to this side, I'm on this side of the line. So that's going to mean the two pieces should come out very similar in size, which I want in the overall scheme of this. So I'm using a small hand saw. Now I'm going to drop into that curve. Why did I use the tenon saw? I just found it more rigid and easy to get that first cut. And I'm going in with this saw, like this. Once I've gone in and I'm confident that I'm in deep enough, I can start dropping my hand on this side. Ever deeper. So I've gone down about three inches on this side and only an inch on this side. Now I'm going to go on this side and I'm going to drop my hand on this side. So I'm going to lift it up a little bit higher and change direction here now. See if I can do this a little bit more where you can see it. So now I'm dropping my hand along the gauge line. And I don't want to go too far because I want to guarantee as near as possible that I'm staying on the gauge line on both sides. I had to add a little bit of correction there. It's important that these are accurate too. Anything to do with layout. It's always important that accuracy. Always prevails. to uh, grip to now. I'm going to plane up, true up these surfaces now. You could do that on the bandsaw, the table saw too. But just think of the exercise you're missing. And the skills and everything else.
Now, because we've just cut this, we could have been relieving stresses in the wood. This is looking pretty good. It looks parallel, pretty parallel down there. I'm going to just take it. There's not much to hold on to, but there is enough. Well, that's looking good. I already planed up these outside edges, so they were already trued. Then I eyeball the top, and this one has stray stayed pretty straight, so that's that one. And if you get stuck, you can put the clamp in the vise to do this as well. It will work fine. wise it's dead on so we're accurate all the way along here <coughs> excuse me so one quick swipe three swipes here on these bottom corners just to stop them from breaking and that's basically now you could if you were like uh, in a hurry, you could just take a, a magic marker, a felt tip, like this, let's say you were in a hurry, and just run a black line along there, just like that, and th that would be ready to go. You would be ready to use that as, as your uh, winding stick. So those are ready to go if you wanted to stop at that. So that would work, but... We're not going to stop at that. We're going to see how straight that line is down there. Uh, I notice that these have changes. These, uh, these have gone a little bit hollow, different places. But can you see that down the center there? These are my new ones. I don't know how these are. But you want them fairly straight. These have stayed pretty straight. So Peely is very stable for things like that. So we're good. Okay, now we're going to put an inlay in here. There's a couple of things we want to do. One is we've got to put a couple of dots in here. If you remember, usually they'll have some dot in here and in here. And the reason we do that is because when you place it on a narrow piece of wood, let's say you wanted to place these on a narrow piece of wood. Let me do it as though you were seeing this from your side. You would place the dot in the middle like this to equal up the weight so that would go there but watch what happens if I move this one over here and this one over here then I put more weight on one side and that can exaggerate a problem it can create a problem that's not actually there so, but if I put this centered if I bring this so if I move it slightly off you can see how this starts to tilt it's a little bit out of balance but if I put it in the middle, it will equal the pressure. Am I close to middle there? It will equal out the pressure on the narrow boards, and that's why we do that. So we have the dot there just to guide us. Let me see if I can turn this to the camera there. So it does affect it. So you want that dot in the middle. It could just be a pencil line as well. But we're going to put the dot in and we're going to use ebony. So these are 16 inches long, so right on the 8 inch mark, make your line. Oops. 
like this. And the same right on here. Try and get it as accurately as you can. Like that. And uh, we're going to come up three eighths of an inch to the center here. It could be half an inch, it would be fine. I think I may have even marked it half an inch on my drawing. No, nope, I didn't say. Just quarter of an inch diameter. Now I'm going to use what we call a brad point bit. This has a very, it has a center point and then it has two spur cutters right on the very outside. And what those cutters do is they will uh, cut the outside rim very cleanly. So we drill the hole right in the middle. And obviously, because it's a spur bit, you can't really drill all the way through without the risk of bursting out the other side. I'm going to clamp this on here. Safety, really, as much as anything. And I'm going to drill into that piece of wood. So right on your line. in a different location so I don't go in the same hole. So I've got a clean exit hole both sides. Now I need the a dowel. Um, I've already cut a couple of dowels and um, I want to show you how I get these. These are, these are some old piano keys uh, that I collect whenever I can. And what we do is got this square peg. We want to put that into this hole here. What we do is we take the corners off first here. So just find a scrap of wood like this. Put the wood on here take the corners off. So this piece of wood is actually just barely over a quarter of an inch square. So I ripped it down just over a quarter of an inch like this and that just gives me a start to go in the hole. Now I drilled a hole through a, a, a hacking knife here so this will take the start of the hole here. And I'm just going to close up my vise like this and take that uh, dowel right on here. Watch what happens now. I'm going to have to hold this so you can't see it too clearly, but we tighten this up just a little bit. You can go wherever it's comfortable. Like I can go right here. See what's happening on this side. I've got this beautiful dowel, ebony dowel here. Now that I'm feeling some resistance on this side. For some reason, I'm not really sure why. So I might go back here and take a look. I can see why. I can, there's a, a chunk there. But I have enough there to do this one. So I'm going to go from the other end now. But you, could, you should be able to go all the way through if you have a clear passage. So I'll have to just start, start this one off again. Do it on the bench if you don't feel comfortable with the pencil sharpening technique. And the same again from this side. Now I'm 
come through. There's my dowel. That will work perfectly. And I'm going to use, uh, usually I'll use super glue. You could use white glue or aliphatic resin, anything really. And these go in here now. What I do, I'll just use um, a super glue, it will work just fine because the super glue will go black when I set this up. So I'm putting the glue on there, it'll just wick into the hole, slide this up till it's tight. And then you could use an accelerator as long as you don't spray too much on it. I think I'm just going to leave mine to set up. I don't really need the accelerator. I'm not in that much of a hurry. Same with this one. Just twist it in. And then the super glue. And that just needs leaving for five minutes just to set up. And then we'll cut those off and plane them down and you'll be able to see them when they're done. The glue's gone off, I can cut these off, I think. So I'm just using a fine saw, leaving it a little bit proud of the surface. Those are my dots done, centered perfectly. So the next bit is going to be the inlaid corner, I think, um, the long black ebony corner. So I'll use this one. Now this is a piece of ebony that I took from a, a thicker piece here. So I've just rip down a, a, a section and then I cut down the length and the way you do that, this is the piece, this is um, about one eighth by one eighth, it's actually three millimeters by three millimeters which is plenty big enough so this will go on this corner here. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you two or three different options for you because you may not have uh, I like this Veritas gauge, um, gauge for this, it's very good we're going to put this on the beveled face, so on the front face here. So what you do is you set the gauge to just under the size. It's going to be hard to see on the uh, on the ebony, I think. So I'm just the gauge is about half a millimeter under size, and um, it's important. It's, it's important really to get it just under size, so that you your uh, ebony is just protruding slightly past the surface. So I'm going to run this gaze line here. So this is one option. I like this gauge for this because it's such a fine cutter. But I've got some alternatives for you too. 
Now normally this would be used as a marking gauge, not as a slitting gauge or a cutting gauge. And um, I'm going to show you another alternative now. So I use this to give me a cut line and I can follow this with a knife. But I'm going over and over this to get as deep as I can, which isn't very deep. You could use a traditional gauge. This would be more typical. This is also, this is called a, a cutting gauge. You can see it doesn't have a point on it in the normal manner of a, a marking gauge. It's got a, an actual cutting iron in there, very small, very fine. And it cuts in both directions, so you can push it or pull it. It goes to a V point, a diamond point or a spear point. And you set this just the same way you did the other one. So I'm going to use this one for a corresponding. Let me just check this in here. So that one works on there. Now this is where it gets a little difficult because I can't put this gauge easily against this front edge and keep it perpendicular. So the uh, stock has to follow the face like this. which means my cut is not perpendicular but slightly angled, but it won't matter because we're going to go in and refine this shortly with a bull nose play when we've got this cut. So I'm marking this, this is another cut line all the way down and off the other end like this. I'm going in the vise now. What I'm going to do is take the knife, go along that cut line, like this. Very carefully. Make sure you're following the cut line from the gauge, not the grain, because the grain can take you off at another tangent if you're not careful. Now I feel more confident because this is going quite deep. It's probably actually gone to the full depth of where I want to go. This side here, the same. Gently and carefully, make sure you're in control. And you know, if you find yourself going against the grain, you may have to turn around and come from the opposite end. Like there, the, the grain just took me off at a tangent the right direction, but it could have just as easily been the other way. So I've corrected the grain. Two hands on here for control and for pressure. So this is where the two cuts kind of start to meet in the inside corner now. I'm pretty close, I'm sure. I can see some movement. Go back on the top again. Here. Pretty close. Carefully, carefully, carefully. that. 
So we've got the, the recess, but what we've got to do is we've got to refine it just a little bit. Now we've got this, uh, this plane here. You could have done the whole thing with this. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things with this in a minute, but I might, generally I would reach for a bullnose plane like this one. But you could use just a chisel almost as easily. So I'm using this to get a crisp shaving, but I don't want to go too much deeper. So let the sole register against, against the edge. I think I'm down. Looks good. And then onto this face on this edge here. So I'm using the plain sole to straighten up. That's my registration. So it's straightened up. Now it didn't hit there, so I'm going to come way back here take one more shaving that feels pretty good let's see how this looks and that is about as good as it gets for for what I'm doing I've got a little bit of an internal corner there where there's a little bit of a discrepancy so I'm just going to go with my chisel right in there just to make sure the corner is crisp just like that That's it, really. So what we're going to do is glue that in. Now, I may have to take off a shaving, because I can, can you see how this rocks here? Can you see that edge just rocking a little bit? Something's not quite square. So I could either plane this piece of wood, the inlay piece, and how I would do that, I want to plane it slightly out of square to correspond to whatever discrepancy there is here. So I would just leave my plane on the bench like this and take a shaving. So it's actually planing out of square, but it's very controlled. And then I do the same from here, like this. And then I flip it end for end, and now I've got the other corner, so I've got the other internal corner. And what this will do is give me a slight chamfer oops, to the inside edge. And that's got it, that's nice and tight looking good don't worry if you slight like I'm slightly under here don't worry most of this is about as good as it gets so what I will do is take this on glue it tape it and then I'll plane the face of this and it'll be exactly where I want it to be so I just use some uh, masking tape and I'm going to go with the white glue here Make sure I've got the right edge on here and just run a bead of glue right down the internal corner. And just make sure you have glue coming out on both edges so you can manipulate this to get the glue onto both faces. See how it's coming out here and here? It's coming out all along. I'm going to leave it past a little bit on either end. And then I should have got these ready, but this will be fine. Put this right on that face here and then pull it. Press it and pull it all the way around to this other face. And now you've got plenty of time for this. There's no urgency. 
You, just, you can put as many of these on as you like, really. Pull, so you're stretching it. So it's pulling it right into the corner. And then we leave that alone for half an hour or so, usually, and we can go in. So here I, put, I press it firmly onto this face, press this down, and then stretch that tape as much as I can and pull it round to that face. Don't worry about the glue on the surface. We can cut that, plane it, scrape it, whatever we want to afterwards. So right in the corner here, make sure it's good and down. Is that a good expression, good and down? Probably. Okay. So I'll see you in a minute when we have this dried. Meanwhile, we can work on the inlay with the white inlay into the other piece of the the other section of the of the winding sticks. I just want to give you a couple of alternatives for doing the inlaid corner just to show you what you can do. This is a screw in a block of wood um, that I can use. What I did, because the edges of the screws usually have some kind of a small chamfer right on the edge, I sank the screw into the surface of the block of wood and then I just took a regular flat file and filed it so it had crisp, sharp edges. And I can use this now. Let's see if I can make this so you can see it. So I can use that as a cutting edge along this surface here just the same way I did the uh, veritas gouge cut down here and then cut down this face too so I'm getting the same gauge lines that I got with the veritas gauge then I can go well, there's a couple of options I could just go with a knife where did my knife go? I can just go with my knife, which would be fairly conventional for me. Uh, that's my, probably my preferred method. So I go down here with two or three strokes just to get the depth. And also into this face, like this. Oops. So th this is pine, and it's going to take you in a, a different, more awkward direction, probably than the, say, a mahogany or something like that. So that that got me uh, a, a rebate at least. So I can do that. Then you would go with, say, I'm just using the poor man's rebate plane here, just to clean up. And we've got a video on that. So you could follow that video. Let me see. Can I do this so you can see? I think I can. So I cleaned up one face, and now I can clean up the other face, but not easily. This will work. So that's another way. So then I've got my inlay piece can go right on that inside corner like that that would work or I could just literally just use this rebate plane or any rebate plane that has fences so that one will work too so there you've got a rebate for your inlay that way that's another way you could actually just use a bullnose plane if you've got one and you can set it with just your fingers like on either side and you can start at one end like this, work back and just use your fingers as the fence like this until you've gone in a little bit. Then you can move your fingers. So that's another way. Then the other way is going to be to just run a gauge line, whatever depth you feel like it needs to be. Run a gauge line like this and like this. 
and then take a saw, a tenon saw like this, and just run that right along that corner like that. So you're actually in the gaze line. And these are just alternate methods. These are methods that you use instead of giving up when you don't have the exact tools. But there is my inlaid corner done. And again, if you clean up with just a bullnose plane, just to take the saw curve out, a couple of strokes that way, and this way here. And there's your recess for your inlay. Very simple. But those are alternatives.